Okay, I'm going to make a introduction to John Marlowe's, to John Marlowe. Who is John Marlowe? Well, who, which John Marlowe am I talking about? I'm talking about my friend, John Marlowe, who is a filmmaker, a fellow entrepreneur, and he also happens to have a rare undiagnosed disease. So what does that mean, rare undiagnosed disease? Well, I have not seen this film and I don't know if John was directly part of this project, but according to this website, undiagnosed means a condition whereby there is no explanation for the symptoms that are being experienced despite repeated examinations. So there's some kind of conditions that there's no clinical diagnosis, why that's the case. And obviously if there's no diagnosis, then there's a very high degree of probability, almost 100% that there is no cure. Unfortunately, in John's condition, the situation is not, um, there, there is no uh, cure because the condition has not been diagnosed. Also, according to the website right in front of me, there are approximately 350 million people on this planet today who have a rare disease. Now, so we need to like hone in on what that really means if undiagnosed cases also fall in this category. But that being said, John has a condition whereby his body, the way I understand it, does not make a lot of lipids. So what are lipids? Well, to an uneducated person like me, lipids mean means fats. Uh, well, Wikipedia, I don't have my glasses on. Wikipedia does say the term is synonymous for fats. And then it says fats are a subgroup of lipids called triglycerides. But lipids also encompass molecules such as fatty acids and their derivatives. Then Wikipedia adds that humans and other mammals use biosynthetic pathways to both break down and synthesize lipids. Some essential lipids can be made this way and must be obtained from diet. So this is the problem. Because that's what we're talking about. John, uh, when he eats certain foods, we can only get, I believe, certain lipids from nutrition. But somehow the rate of uh, absorption or creation uh, is not what's happening in my body and a lot of other bodies. So what this results in is not being able to put on wait, that's John on a good day. That's approximately, I don't know if that's a recent picture, but I, I've seen some of his other posts on Facebook and he is really skinny, man. He's, a, he's really skinny. It's kind of scary, not in a bad way. You know, he's watching this probably. I don't mean, it's, 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 he has no, like, there's no fat on his body. You know, there's very little muscle as well. So it's not the nutrition, it's not the exercise. It's just the body cannot put, the body cannot uh, hone on, cannot hold on to, cannot produce enough lipids. So, uh, so these, this is John's um, Instagram. And you can see yourself. Now, now I've spoken to John, I've been speaking to John since 2019-ish, maybe 27, 2018 on, and onwards. And I feel really, I feel like I need a couple of degrees to understand what he's saying. And, and I'm like Googling stuff later on, I'm like jotting down notes and, and so he knows his stuff. He, he, he doesn't have a degree in medicine, but obviously, because of his condition, he's been reading a lot. 
And uh, I would say amongst all the people I've spoken to in the past couple of years, if not the entirety of my lifetime, he's definitely one of the folks who knows a fair bit about medicine, how healthcare is funded in general, how healthcare is funded in the United States. And he's probably the one person that knows the most about medicine, medical science, who doesn't have a background in medicine. So he, he knows a fair bit about genetics and you can, you can ask him like, how does this work? How does that work? How does the cellular architecture work? You know, what's really happening here in, in the domains of genetics? You know, how, how's this translation happening? And he can answer all those questions. He just knows. He doesn't have to go and Google like me. He just knows. He's also, he can also speak Japanese. Uh, he's taken some classes. I think Japanese one, was one of his electives or um, uh, at, at Berkeley. So he's fairly involved with the uh, local uh, Japanese American uh, language groups. So what's now, what's happening right now is uh, well, there's a fundraiser that John has started. Uh, I don't know why he didn't put the entire sum here. I think he's raising 15K in total and the funds are gonna be raised for one, there is a stem cell therapy process um, and the updates are posted uh, regularly on his GoFundMe page that is right here. We've been posting more updates on Facebook, but uh, I don't go to Facebook that often. But we need to, uh, excuse me. We need to figure out a way to get the updates here. Um, so yeah, I don't know why. Well, anyway, so this is the fundraiser. $3,000 have been raised uh, so far out of the $5,000 goal. Uh, in terms of the historical background, uh, John has been trying all these different, let me close some uh, tabs here. John's been trying uh, a lot of different things in order to really get to a diagnosis. So the first major initiative that I personally have noticed is to this website. Um, this was a nonprofit that was created. I'm not sure what John's involvement was, but he was one of the patients. Uh, basically, this was a hackathon that was hosted in the summer of 2019, as you can see. Uh, many individuals came from three different cities and John's gen genomic data was used to try to get to the bottom of what's going on. So I remember seeing pictures from this event and people from a lot of different backgrounds came and they looked at the data set and were able to get to the bottom of what's happening. And um, I'm not sure if all these companies were directly involved or there were representatives from these or maybe employees from these companies. That's something I should ask John. And um, a lot of smart people came together to try to get to the bottom of what's happening. And this was the case background for John. At that time, John was 33 year old with an, with an undiagnosed disease, uh, history of vomiting after breastfeeding uh, and failure to thrive. Um, what is that? Oh, uh, like not being able to put on weight and stuff. Okay. Not having enough nutrition. And that's just one of the many causes. In John's case is not diagnosed yet. Um, yeah, this, this is what I was talking about. Significant issues in weight gaining despite adequate caloric intake. Um, height, speed increasing, but as a child, uh, also report nausea, stomach aches, and overall aversion to food. Um, 20s GI issues became more severe. Uh, daily lower abdominal pain, 
characterized by burning and nausea, uh, developed a chronic vomiting situation, vomit five times per day. Uh, at the current age, 5'10", weighs 109 pounds, so it's very frail. Um, I'm 170 right now, so I could, I could probably just have Johnson on my shoulder. Um, yeah, it's uh, not a lot of weight. Easily fatigued due to limited muscle mass and low weight. This is something John has uh, mentioned almost every time I spoke to him on the phone, uh, the fatigue. Um, so we're talking about the physiological condition, but obviously the brain also needs a certain amount of fat in the body. So if the body has a general inability to be able to hold on to fat or not, the lipids are not getting produced or not being produced in an optimal manner, then uh, there may be some impact on a neuro, neurophysiological level. Uh, every time I spoke to him, I, I've personally noticed him to be very like sharp. He's, he's very, he, like, he's always, like, he follows through the conversation. We're probably getting too deep into this, but um, he's a very sharp guy. Um, but he, the fatigue aspect, he always mentioned, like, he's like the low energy level. That's something he shares quite openly. It's actually on his website. One of the website uh, that shares this, this uh, information about him. So pain and weakness in knees, uh, a couple of disc herniations, that's what we're dealing with right now as well. Shoulder dislocations, GI issues, and pain from, from building muscle masses and lifting and uh, building muscle masses with lifting. Oh, okay, right, like lifting weights. So he, like if he lifts weight, he's not gonna be able to put muscle mass, uh, nor with more protein intake. Uh, yeah, actually, I noticed one of his uh, Instagram posts where he, does this Photoshop, he's like, I wish I was like this guy able to put on muscle. So he just kind of put his face and his name on a, some kind of magazine cover. So this was, uh, this is the website here, sv.ai slash undiagnosed dash one. And this initiative got rolled into um, uh, research to the people.org. And um, so if you go to research to the people.org, um, there are a hand, like a number of cases here. Um, Leila is actually there as well. I almost don't want to talk about that right now. Just, um, yeah, so there are a couple of individual cases. Um, and I don't know what's going on here. I haven't looked too deep into this. So John's right there, as you can see. So if you are wondering, uh, if anyone who I don't know too well is wondering what this fundraiser is about and you wanna uh, verify uh, what I'm sharing with you, this is right in front of you. You can reach out to these teams directly if you'd like, uh, if you'd like to do your due diligence. There are about me pages here. So there's a whole bunch of folks that are actively involved with this initiative. So you can, uh, if you'd like to find these individuals on the web and reach out to them, just anyone, I guess you could uh, Google their name and you know connect with them through a uh, channel email if you can find it. Um, I don't know if there's a contact page here. But, um, well, there's all these social media links. So there we go. Alrighty, so there are other, you can send them a tweet. And uh, if you wanted to verify, I'm like, and I've known John for all these years. He's a very nice person. Like I said, one of the smartest guys I've had a chance to talk to. I love this quote from John from two years ago when I was talking to him. He's like, what we need on this world is more hope, more healing, more pleasure. Uh, so, um, yeah, I'm not sure if, if John actually read that hedonic, hedonistic imperative, <laughs> probably just talking about ethical pleasure in the ethical sense. Uh, pleasure is like many different, 
if you eat ice cream, that could be quite pleasurable as well. So there's like, like a uh, diverse spectrum. But yeah, this is this is uh, this is John's fundraiser, and it would be great. It would be amazing if anyone watching this can contribute. Uh, everything, any donation matters. You can start with the least amount you can donate if you are able and willing. Uh, then you could donate a little bit more. And what we want to do is we want to see John healthy. These funds. These funds are first going to be used for uh, a stem cell procedure. So uh, stem cells are going to be, I'm not sure how the stem cells are going to be grafted, but the, uh, uh, they're going to be injected in, I should know where exactly the stem cells are going to be injected. Uh, but uh, the spine is uh, experiencing, uh, like I said, degenerative disc disease. So it's going to be somewhere along the spine. Uh, and that's step one of two. Uh, the other step is a, a new, uh, process called disc seal. Uh, that's step two after uh, I believe recovery under ha like uh, happens with the stem cell procedure. So yeah, so this is my uh, request for anyone watching this to uh, please, please consider donating uh, and supporting whichever way you can. Uh, if you can donate, please share this link to the fundraiser. Uh, share my video or both. Uh, whatever you could do to help, it would be greatly appreciated. Thanks so much. I wish you all a great evening. Good night. Have a nice day. Thank you.